in today's episode, I will take you to beautiful Mosanda. Welcome back to my channel. I am so happy you are here again. But if you are watching my video for the first time, I am an off-road and adventure enthusiast. Once you subscribe to my channel, you're gonna learn more about unique places in the UAE and Oman like today, camping and hiking tips and some topics related to off-road vehicles. So make sure to press the subscribe button and also the bell notification button because you're gonna be the first one to see whenever I upload a new video in the future. to Musandam. I am gonna cover as many places as I can by the coast and there are so many beautiful hidden gems, pristine beaches, crystal clear waters. By the way I hope that you can hear me because today it's very windy and on the top of that I am right now as you can hear close to the sea. So and because I only have two days off I decided to go through the coastal road and all the beautiful places next to it. I will also try to go to the lower mountains by the coastal road as well because I only have two days off so it's not enough to go deep inside the Musanda mountains and all the way to Limas as I was planning to go initially. However for that trip to the mountains, high mountains of Musanda, I will Will reserve another two or three days to cover all the places there thoroughly but for now let's focus on the coastal side I'm also due to change my tires the current tires I have are already around three years old so you can imagine that they are not in quite a good condition anymore and on the top of that my air compressor broke down so going to the mountains and following the road off-road for about three to four hours one way would be quite a risky idea especially that I am abroad I'm in Oman however I will book another two or three days to go on the trip to the Musanda mountains to enjoy it and not be in a rush or a worry like today to take you to is this beach in Harf village. It's an off-road track leading to it so we will definitely need 4x4 car. Plus previously it was possible to drive here all the way on the beach however after recent uh, rains as I'm guessing the road is washed away so it's not possible to enter the beach by the car. Also the building that I'm sitting here and sheltering from the sun right now is also quite new. It hasn't been here around two years ago and I'm guessing it's built by fishermen. I used to love this beach so much at the very beginning when I uh, started exploring Musandam and I camped here pretty much every time. I really have good memories. What else to add? You can uh, snorkel around here because close to the mountains there is a beautiful coral reef. However, the sea here tends to be rough, but uh, snorkeling here is amazing and a lot of beautiful colorful fishes. I want to mention as well that behind the beach there is a graveyard which seems to be quite common for beaches here in Musandam because the next beach I will take you to also there will be Graveyard. Right now I am taking you to another beach but this beach is a little bit different and very special because it features a historical landmark, historical and religious at the same time and the story behind it is quite interesting. Let me tell you when we arrive. So this is the road leading to 
the beach. The beach is called locally Ras al Sheikh. Ras it's in Arabic head, and Sheikh it's uh, either a person from royal family or a religious teacher. So you can see there is no way to reach this place without 4x4 car. So I arrived to the place that's called in Google Maps Ancient Masjid, which is not ancient in fact, and not a masjid. The masjid is a place right next to it, a bigger building. However, the one I am standing right next to is a tomb of a religious person considered by a local community to be a holy man. It is not really known how old this place is, however the people I talked to about it all agree that the place was here already before a Portuguese invasion which happened in the beginning of 17th century. The story of a man who is buried here behind me is actually quite interesting and I'll talk a little bit about it in a moment. The common thing for these kind of holy places is the beautiful smell lingering in the air and I've seen this already in Salala. These types of tombs are actually present there as well. The smell comes from bakhur and also kind of perfumes uh, left in this place, I guess, to commemorate the memory of a holy person resting here. It is believed that uh, this holy man named Masoud, he came from Iran to teach people about Islam here in Musandam. However, from what I got to know, he died during his journey on a boat. So his body was brought here and buried in this place, all together with his companions and students that actually are buried also in the graveyard behind the top. I want to point out something else as well. So as I was talking about the perfumes and bakhur being burned in those holy places, if you haven't watched my video from Ain Akhmur in UAE, from a hot springs where it is also believed that also a holy person is buried uh, there as well. So the whole place was considered to be holy and still is considered to be holy by some people. Uh, the link to the video is gonna be somewhere here, I guess. So if you're interested to know that story, you can go and watch it. The battles of fragrances and as well as the Bakhur uh, burners are present in this place as well, which is quite interesting to know that it's a common thing, even though separated by hundreds of kilometers for people to probably respect this kind of holy places. Oman is allowed anywhere so let's enjoy <laughs> this uh, privilege still because in UAE more and more places are being closed so Mosandam is uh, still quite an attractive getaway for camping lovers and uh, obviously also because there are so many beautiful and pristine beaches here and also the mountains are very high wild I want to also mention uh, the internet. If you need internet in Musandam, there are two options. One is Oridu 
and the other one is Omantel and I would recommend Omantel because it has better signal in the mountains and first I used to use Oridu and I didn't have internet coverage in the mountains but Omantel is quite good with that there are packages you can use a daily package that will give you one gigabyte and you will pay around one reals however to buy this one gigabyte you have to uh, top up your account for two reals because in fact the package costs one real and something now in Oman you have to register your sim card and you can do this in uh, in Lulu hypermarket which is in Khasab uh, in the center of Khasab and talking about Lulu hypermarket I always encourage you to do shopping uh, on the site to support local economy so in the same shopping mall where the Lulu hypermarket is there is a Oman Tel branch and you can buy the SIM card there and register it however check the opening hours because it is not open 24 hours <laughs> getting stronger and stronger my priority now is to set up everything inside the car so that I can quickly close the problem is I don't really know what to leave outside of the car I mean what things I will try to fit inside as much as I can but some things will have to be left outside and I hope they don't fly away over the night Oh my god, that's gonna be a challenge now. It's a challenge without the wind already to close this door, especially that the wind is coming from that side. <sighs> okay, almost there. Oof, I made it. Finally, I made it. Okay, I can undress now. Surprisingly, it's not cold. I'm really surprised because first of all, it's windy. And second of all, I'm in the mountains, like quite high. Right now, it's about 700 meters above the sea level. So I expected it's gonna be so cold. I even took a sleeping bag. But so far, so good. Maybe it's too early yet. I'm starving, to be honest, but can't cook anything in this weather, so I guess I'll just have some snack. What can I eat now? Maybe this. And I will try to arrange everything as much as I can. Because right now, my car inside is a disaster. Do you want to see it? So yeah, this is how currently it looks like. The lease here needs to stay empty because whenever I will... Jeez, the, the noise of the wind is so loud. Uh, whenever I will have to go out, I have to use this door. And I can put all my stuff there in the passenger seat. 
and then here we still have some empty space so maybe I'll pop some things there and this cooking stuff had to stay inside because otherwise it would fly away and then my clothes here and the snack box Olka is moving but I parked it in a very strategical way which means that if the wind pushes it on this side there is a cliff down there it won't fall down because there are rocks sheltering it from this side so in the worst case it's gonna get scratched and bent that's it I mean that's not gonna happen that would have to be a really bad wind to move this and this is the situation right now mm, don't try it at home and in the car as well Finally I prepared my bed and I can stretch my legs. It's not as cold as I thought it's gonna be so that's a good thing. I think I will not utilize my extra sleeping bag then. And it's about 11 p.m. already so I should sleep but I'm not sleepy at all because I drank black tea so I guess that's why. And I think I will take melatonin and then read a book and wait for the sleepiness to come. Left side of the car is totally packed. Normally I would have almost all this stuff outside if sleeping in a car, but today that was not an option. But still I'm surprised that everything fit. Uh, well, everything except of the box with carpets and water. Last time it was that windy when I was camping in Salala in Jebel Samhan but that time I don't know how I made it through the night I parked at the edge of the mountain and the wind was probably as strong as today so I was so scared that the car is gonna fall down from the cliff I barely slept that night Be careful. <laughs>